a video not about clothing on a clothing channel. All right, let's get into it. Howdy all, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are safe and I hope you guys are healthy. My name is Josh and I absolutely love clothing and personal style. So if you're into that type of content, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube as well as follow me on Instagram at where's underscore Galdo. We're on the road to 6K subscribers, almost there, a little bit over 100 subscribers that uh, are needed to hit that 6,000 mark. I hate to sound like the, the typical YouTuber and ask for subscriptions, but it really does help me and I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I really appreciate everybody who's ever subscribed, watched any of my videos, or even follow me on Instagram. So quick little shout out and thank you to you guys, uh, but hopefully I get to keep growing and so I can do more videos just like this one. Well, maybe not just like this one actually, because today's a video that I wanted to kind of challenge myself. Um, seeing as my channel is primarily centered around clothing and fashion, I wanted to see if I could really kind of just take a hard left and make it primarily about personal style. So today's video is going to be about things that you can do to improve your personal style without the use of clothing. So let's get right into it. Personal style aspect number one, or well, these aren't really ordered in any specific order, but first item I'm deciding to actually talk about is gonna be your hair. Hair is wildly important. Hair is directly associated with your face and that is gonna be kind of like the defining, one of the defining qualities that people recognize and use to identify you as like yourself. Um, I've looked like this for five years now or so uh, and honestly, I think this is the most comfortable uh, that I can be with my look. I've been growing my hair, or not really actively growing, but I've had long hair for about that, that five years that I'm talking about. Had a goatee for about the same time as well. And it's just something that suits me. It is a whole lot of work. Uh, I know maybe some people might be interested in growing their hair out, but there are a lot of downsides, uh, like just, I find hair everywhere, like around my apartment, like literally there is just loose hair like all over the place. Can't tell if it's either mine or my girlfriend's, but either way, that's something you put up with. I mean, also like dealing with sleeping with long hair is different, way different than when you have like short hair. Like I literally have to direct my hair like to a side or something because it just gets so unruly in bed and if I'm laying on it I can't move my head it's just it is a pain and the upkeep is a lot can be a lot if that's your routine um, and the products can be expensive just know you're going to be getting into that if you decide to grow your hair long and you want to upkeep it well I don't even upkeep my hair very well I mean I do the bare minimum and uh, I think that my hair is perfectly fine I mean it's not the healthiest could be better but I digress. A lot of other really popular hairstyles are going to be like a shaved head. I've seen a lot of people recently shaving their head and I think it looks awesome. I think it's a great change of pace if you have medium to long hair just to kind of shave it all off. Um, coloring your hair or dyeing your hair, also a really great way to experiment. Um, but I do think it's kind of funny that people end up looking like Frank Ocean when they shave their head and color it green. But I mean, you could also go the Evan Mock direction where he has like short kind of cropped hair but it's like pink and I think that looks awesome on him. Uh, so yeah, you can experiment with length, you can experiment with color, and I mean, there's other really popular hairstyles as well, like the comb over, I used to have a top knot with shaved sides and back. In high school, I had a faux hawk with a tail, just like every Filipino person in 2010. Um, also, what else? There's the mullet, there's the wolf cut. There are so many different hairstyles, and I'm talking about this in the perspective of a straight male. And so, I mean, for females, they have even more methods or different styles of haircut that are super popular. So if you're trying to develop your own personal style and you wanna make a change, there are a lot of different options for you to kind of choose something else, see if you like it. And the great thing about hair is that if you don't like it, wait a couple of months, let it grow out, you can change it completely. Now using me as a personal example, I like long hair because I have basically three options in how to manage it, or three primary options in how to manage it. First one is gonna be this right here, where I have it in a bun. This is what I have it most often and at work because I have to put like a hair net on. I work in a hospital, I'm a nurse, um, so I have to put a hair net on and it covers it completely. So bun is option number one for me. Two is going to be 
in a ponytail, so just down but tied up. And this is gonna be the kind of go-to for me when I'm on like, when I'm at home or just doing really anything, uh, I'll have it in a ponytail. And I'm, just to show you how long my hair is, tied up, it goes like, like upper belly. Uh, yeah, so tied up in a ponytail into the back is a really common way for me to do this. When I worked on the old, like on my old floor as a nurse, people would mistake me for a woman all the time or uh, ask me what Native American tribe I'm in and I'm like, uh, but yeah, so that's option number two is going to be tied up in a ponytail. And option number three, which I don't utilize very often is going to be just down, down and all around. Uh, yeah, just to show you a more accurate representation of how long my hair is not tied up it goes like almost to the bottom of my belly but yeah this this way is like to me the most annoying because the slightest gust of wind and my hair is like boom but again you just kind of learn to accept that if you've had long hair for a really long time i think this sh frames my face better than most other hairstyles that I've tried. I have a rather round face, and that's another thing to consider when you're choosing your hairstyle, is going to be looking at your face shape and choosing something that accentuates the qualities of your face that you want to accentuate, while maybe hiding certain aspects of your face that you would want hidden. So, yeah, hair. Another little caveat, and that also is like pertaining to hair, is facial hair for anybody who can grow facial hair. Uh, this is the best I got. I choose to wear a goatee, one, because the bottom of the goatee defines a chin line, which I don't have a very well-defined chin line at all, and then just pairing it with a mustache seems natural. Also, it's the only hair on my face that I can grow. I mean, if you can see the sides, they're really patchy. I mean, there's something little like there, but not nearly enough to actually make full facial hair. Dude, if I could grow a full like beard, like full facial hair, I would look like Hiroyuki Sonata or like uh, Hiroki Nakamura of Visvim. That, oh, that's ultimate, like, looks goal for me. Number two in this video is going to be in direct reference to your body, from your head to your toes. It is going to be a really generalized version of it, but there's so much about your body that you can do to improve your self-image. And I'm saying self-image and not personal style, because ultimately that's what's important, is to improve your own self-image, which can, which can improve your confidence and ultimately create a more, just a better you. And if I'm going to highlight anything in this video, if there was anything that you take away, it would be the statement that you should take the time to improve yourself in areas that you see fit. And all of that is subjective and all up to you. But in regard to say your face, I personally not a huge fan of like my face. And I know that's like a problem that I'm dealing with personally, but definitely take time to, I mean, take care of your skin take care of your grooming, take care of hygiene. Hygiene is incredibly important. Um, and yeah, really like take care of your teeth, take care of everything that you need to, to make yourself feel more confident. So I'm not great in talking about like skin routines and stuff. That's definitely all over YouTube and you can find better skin routines from other people. So I'm gonna go ahead and defer that to the, anyone else who has a skin routine. And uh, at least for me, body wise, I've had self-image issues for a while. Uh, I have a very particular body type that is kind of like, I'm an average height, so I'm 5'9", little stocky, meaning a little bit wider, broader in the shoulders, and I weigh approximately 200 pounds uh, at the recording of this video. I go to the gym like twice a week. Uh, I'm thankful that I have a job that is actually pretty physically engaging so that I, I'll be able to actually have like a not really a full workout at work, but I'm not stagnant. Uh, on average at work, I usually get like 13,000, almost 15,000 steps if it's a really busy day. Um, so I work in the operating room in a hospital, so I'm always constantly moving patients. I'm always like moving gurneys and all that stuff and uh, equipment that's really heavy. So I get a little bit of physical activity from work and then I supplement that with the gym uh, whenever I feel the energy to do so. So that's usually like, 
twice a week. I'm gonna need my phone for a second because I wrote this out, but cannot for the life of me say this whole sentence or paragraph. But it's important to understand that you that there are some things in your life physically that you can change and other things that you simply cannot change. Many physical attributes can be adjusted based on making certain lifestyle choices, forming good habits, and sticking to those choices. So definitely, definitely create a system for yourself to improve. And I would encourage everybody to exercise their ability to take charge of their lives and change yourself for the better. Sounds really repetitive, but I think for me, that's like kind of a motivating statement to say out loud. Last thing I wanna talk about in this video is going to be one that I've tried to like somehow fit into my channel in some way because I've wanted to talk about this for a really long time and that's gonna be tattoos. I absolutely love tattoos. I have I think 13 or 14 so far. I am planning to get more and goodness, I, if, I appreciate the art of tattooing so much and I'm so glad that I have the tattoos that I do but um, yeah, tattoos feed directly into the improvement of my own self-image. I mean, I guess it's like a vanity type of thing, but it's true. The artistry that is tattooing is vast, it's very, very detailed, and getting a good tattoo and seeing yourself with a permanent piece on you that is like something that you really like, for me, just, it makes me like to look in the mirror. Although I love tattoos, they are not a must. I don't think that everybody should get tattoos, but I think that anybody who is interested should try and get a tattoo. I know there are a lot of limitations depending on your cultural background, but if you are able to get tattoos and if it is socially acceptable for you to get tattoos, I think it's a wonderful art form that you can maybe explore. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of really great tattoo artists that exist nowadays and with the advent of social media, that statement makes me sound really old, but through social media, so many more people can expose, expose, can display their art form that you now have a really, really great resource to be able to find the tattoo artist that is perfect for the style and image that you want for yourself. So, Instagram's great. I mean, like, in simple terms. Now, I'm gonna be like your parents and say, tattoos are permanent. They absolutely are permanent get them removed but they're just as expensive if not more expensive to get a tattoo removed depending on what it is really really important to make sure that if you get a tattoo you know you want that on your body forever and I'm very confident in the ones that I have on my body and let me change really quick all right so before I got tattoos I would never ever ever want to wear tank tops I mean I for me, and this is just a personal issue, too much blank space looks really void of anything, but with tattoos, I'm starting to love showing my, like, more skin. Um, it's really important, important, important to know that tattoos are an investment. Cheap tattoos are very rarely good tattoos, so definitely do your research, pay up the money, you'll be happy in the end. Uh, but yeah, there, there's different areas that I really want to tattoo more like over here I think this is really blank and I know I could wear like necklaces and chains and stuff to kind of fill in the area But what better than more tattoos and chains and stuff? So I would I kind of see tattoos as like the ultimate permanent accessory and Mine are primarily located around my arms um, So right over here is going to be the newest one that I have Little rat with wings done in an etching style by my friend Mark. I have this over here. This is a quote from the band Basement. Over here is a plane done in New York. Over here is a spool of thread and a needle. We have dice. That was a Friday the 13th tattoo. Um, I have this right here. Happy and sad face in a Venn diagram. This one is one of my favorites as well. This is a pair of scissors and that one was also done in New York. I do have more tattoos. There's one on my back and like three on my legs. Uh, so I'm building the tattoo collection and that was just a really quick rundown of the tattoos that I have so far. Um, different tattoos mean different things to me or signify some sort of something to me. But a lot of people would say that tattoos should be meaningful. And if your tattoos are meaningful, I think that's great. Um, I really appreciate when someone can tell a story and I can pretty much tell a story for most of my tattoos, but some of them 
literally I like because I love the imagery. Tattoos are an accessory. They don't need to mean anything. Just like clothing, they don't need to mean anything. You just think they look good. And that's okay too. If you want to get a tattoo based off that premise, there are some tattoos that mean nothing to me. This one right here, this little like Joker juggling, I love that tattoo. And I guess it represents a trip to New York with my friend, but it, I got it because I thought it looked cool. So it doesn't need to mean something, but I mean, sometimes when I explain it to other people, I'll be like, ooh, I love humor. Um, but no, it's just something that I think is fun looking. Two quick little caveats in regard to tattoos. One, make sure that the environment that you exist in is welcoming to tattoos. I know different cultures are different, they have different values. For me personally, I work in a hospital, I work in the operating room, I am a nurse, I can wear my tattoos and be just fine. I don't need to cover them, or at least I haven't covered them, it has not been an issue for me personally. But my parents took a while, well not really a while, but my parents didn't want me to get them at first, not visible ones, but they grew to just, it became a part of me in time and now that's how people recognize me, especially at work, because I wear like a hat and a mask. People recognize me by my tattoos at work. My parents eventually got used to it. So make sure that your background culture, your work culture is all cool with having visible tattoos if you choose to get a visible one. That's really important. As well as when you get a tattoo, make sure you upkeep with it regularly. Make sure you keep good hygiene, make sure it's clean so it doesn't get infected because when you get a tattoo, you have little micro abrasions and the potential for infection is definitely apparent. And moisturize your tattoos so they don't fade out as quickly. Now, the a really common thing I get whenever like an older individual or a more traditional individual talks about tattoos to me, oh, how is that gonna look like when I'm 60? My go-to answer is I don't really care how it looks like when I'm 60 because I want to look like this now. When I'm 60, I don't think I'm going to be concerned with looking good or bad. I think I'm just going to be happy to be alive. Just know you're going to run into those types of people in the world. If you don't want to engage in those types of conversations, just walk away. But yeah, tattoos, love them, love them so much. I will get more and I'll probably show you guys as I get more um, in my videos. That's about all I really have to say about aspects of your life that you can change to improve your personal style or just improve your self image in general. I hope this helps someone out there. I hope this is like introspective in some ways for some people. And I wanna know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you guys do that is not clothing related that improves your self image or personal style? This was such a fun video to make and record. This topic like fascinated me more than I thought it would at the beginning of me trying to write it out or kind of like draft the idea. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let's get to that 6K subscribers. We're almost there. So yeah, feel free to subscribe if you feel so inclined and I'll catch you guys in the next video later.